Hey, 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 welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Now that energy is fluid. I know you know the deal. Just interpret the message as it best resonates. Never force anything. Take what you need, leave the rest. All right. Also, know that on this channel, I like to look at everything. So the readings tend to be a little bit longer because of that, because I look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and I see how they play out as karmic themes within your experience and along with everything else. So if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, obviously be open to getting a shadow reading, right? And um, write the word of the video in your comment bar. The word of the video is always the first word on the first card that I pull out, all right? Um, you'll know if I chose you, if I wrote the word winner underneath your comment. Now, if you're having to forget about, you forget the word, like, because again, it's given in the beginning of the video, it'll be in the description box, along with all other important links. If you're connected to a Scorpio, you might want to check out my Scorpio channel, or if you're connected to any other Zodiac, you can check out my psychic soul healer channel and that channel let me tell you something that channel gets no love i don't know why people don't like all zodiac channels i don't know what the deal is anyway um scorpio channel is jumping though anyway so like i said um if you want to enter into winning free reading you got to do those things now let's see what the word of the video is going to be now, again, this is the underlining energy. So that's why everybody's doing what they're doing. Let's see what that word is. It's pride. It's pride. So no one's doing anything. That's what that means. You're in a Mexican standstill. Because someone, again, is prideful. And I'm going to look at some inner child wounds. I was called to do this this way tonight opposed to doing it at the end. So I want to look at the inner child wounds. Uh, oppression, oppression. I feel like, again, this person was raised by someone that kept their energy down. However, this person tried to keep your energy down. They tried to keep you down. Oppression psychologically, emotionally, by not giving again and love here is again the spiritual lesson of why we're all down here is to learn that we're not separate from love right however we're all born into families that you know trying to teach us that we're not love a lot of times where we can perceive that that we're separate from love and separate from love just as anywhere where we feel that we're defective, not good enough. And again, the experiences that we're born into and that play out within our lives teach us these experiences. So again, I feel like pride, the relationship of not wanting to show feelings, of not wanting to be emotionally vulnerable, is one way this person again kept your energy down acting like if they, that you don't matter right so if i starve you out the, like by not giving you any energy what does it do it hurts the spirit when meanwhile this person does have love it's not like they don't have love and that you don't have love but this also teaches me that you grew up in an environment that you were taught that love came with conditions because if you didn't obey those conditions well love was taken away from you because really that's what pride is all about pride is about um is all ego it's not wanting to put your yourself in someone else's shoes you don't want to see things from anyone else's perception you also don't want to take accountability and so Again, um, people tend to oppress, which is take, keep someone energies down, keep them down because they don't want them to normally abandon them, believe it or not. Because if you get better, then you're going to leave me behind. 
you're going to again then it, it's also a, a thing where this person doesn't want to evolve so there's a little bit of this energy of that something transpired we don't know yet but we're gonna see but the underlining energy is I can't give in because of my pride um and really because love I don't feel separate if I feel separate from love so almost like if I give you full control over me that you'll hurt me again that's usually people feel that they have to elevate themselves which is what it looks like that this person needed to elevate themselves in order to be in a in a relationship with you and that again is not love so the spiritual connection here is love and that's really the spirit the, the lesson the lesson for this person is to um surrender their ego where for you it's to learn again to really love yourself because you're a mirror of who comes into your life so you wouldn't pull a person into your life that wanted to take your energy unless you were raised by someone dominant or unless you dated someone previously that was dominant that wanted to control you and again part of controlling is is uh, done spiritually and emotionally it's so spiritually is if I don't give you anything and I act like you're not as important even though I know that you are you know that I know that you are but I'm not going to express it ever and I'm not gonna you know change the way that I am to show that I'm vulnerable or show that I really care about you because I'm full of pride so we're going to look and see what happened. And we're also going to see again um, what they're going to do. Because now we've already seen like what's dictating this person's motives. And we could also see why maybe you're attached to this person. Because you need to learn what unconditional love is. And that's by first obviously loving yourself scheming so this person again even though they're in separation from you they're again they're they're always um trying to strategize they're always trying to you know um manipulate the situation they never show their full hand which is what the problem is and they need to release control because that's what this is all about this person doesn't feel safe in being vulnerable, but that has nothing to do with you. Because that's what pride really is, why people are prideful. Again, because then this person would have to be, again, would have to, again, see that they're not more superior than you. Like I said, when a person has a lot of pride, they don't want to surrender their ego and they don't want to surrender their ego because what they're doing is they're acting more superior. So they're trying to um, spiritually make you undervalue yourself by holding back, but it's a good way of oppressing you because obviously if they're not giving you anything and you're still get it, like giving to them and saying this or it's staying connected to them it becomes draining so again the lesson for you is about what unconditional love really is and sometimes when we grow up in a family that is wounded we tend to overgive and be overly loyal to a point that it's sabotaging to ourselves so you're a mirror of who and what comes into your life this person acts arrogant and wants to be more superior. And for you, again, is somebody that probably didn't get enough love, didn't get enough nurturing. And again, it took it, it suppressed your spirit. So that's what oppressed is. It's not really that people are stepping on you. That's what it kind of feels like spiritually. And it's a way of control. It's a way of manipulation. And 
that doesn't happen unless you had someone significant do it to you before. That's where the trauma came from. So we're not awake to a lot of times or don't really know what unconditional love is supposed to look like, right, to ourselves. So we have to have, you know, an experience play out within our life for us to see that. I mean, pride, superior, we can see it here, scheming, manipulating, keeping you down, present, but it's not, but it doesn't have anything to do with love. When someone's wounded and they love, they want to control. That's what narcissists do, but understand it's not a healthy love. Detachment. It's of what trauma bonds are made up of. Displaced. I fell out of place in a sense of not belonging, which again, that's the spiritual like kind of attack that this person does when they're not giving you the attention that you need, when they're kind of not inviting you fully into their world. And fully inviting you into their world would be, you know, inviting you around their friends, their family, really making you a part of their life where this person is again superior, they want to be superior, wants to like have the upper hand, wants to manipulate because they don't feel safe in a relationship. Really, they don't feel, um, they don't feel like they belong anywhere because that's what people that want to control, remember they have a fear of abandonment because of the way that they feel about themselves based on their past experiences, which is why they want to control. But it makes you feel displaced. And that is what projection is all about. And that's when a person's wounded, when you're like, okay, wait a minute, I'm in a relationship with you. You're making me feel like I'm that person, but you're that's who you are. And it is, it's like, and that's because they don't feel well good. So again, I, a person that doesn't feel good about themselves and just always feels out of place because emotionally they can't connect, well, again, they are going to try and act more superior. They're going to overcompensate because for that lack. And that's where the scheming comes into play. And that's where, again, they want to control. And in order for them to control, again, they're going to overcompensate where they have to make you suppress yourself and that's a way of oppressing you right by making you feel like you're not again care about again like, like like you're not cared about like you're forgotten about so this is what what it feels like what this being with this person felt like these were your triggers which by the way again if you didn't get love and that love was conditioned conditional like again that you have to do as I say when I say in order to get love and that again completely meant ignoring your needs well that's what it feels like it's con continuously abandonment and where the person begins to feel like it eats away at the spirit when meanwhile, it's like, you're like, this isn't even you. It's like, I, it's the mask. This person doesn't really let anyone know who they are. And I think that they don't really know who they are. Because when you continually wear masks, do you really know who you are? You only know who you are by having authentic relationships. And the only way that that happens is when you really invest in yourself and create yourself. This person doesn't doesn't do that I feel like they go from relationship to relationship or relationship and then long spurts of time go by where they don't get into a relationship and then they get back into a relationship but the problem is is that the relationship always looks the same always plays out the same because this person is always wearing a mask which means nothing ever manifests good when you wear a mask because you're not coming from your true self your higher self you're only having a relationship with god and the universe because the universe is god and so when you're a magnet to that the universe speaks to you by 
who comes into your life and what plays out within your life karmically. So karmically, nothing ever good comes out for this person, which is why they have the need to dominate and control and oppress you and feel more superior. Is their fit, their 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 lack of you know knowing who they are makes them not like who they are. Now, remember, if we grew up in a place of survival, you wouldn't know who you are because your mind can't be in two places at one time. If you have to, again, can't be in survival and and be creating yourself, that's the opposite side of the brain. The creative mind is the right side of the brain, which is intuitive. It's creative. It's, it's of spirit. It's the creative genius resides there. However, there's the dust part of ourselves, which is the left part of our brain, which is logical, it's linear, it's fact, it's 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 that. When a person lived in survival for long periods of time, their, again, right brain a lot of times isn't as developed or their left brain isn't as developed. So I believe that this person, again, doesn't know, they know how to go out and get, go to work. They know how to make money. They know how to do like the things of the physical world. However, anything related to the spiritual realm, this person is not spiritually evolved. They, they just keep repeating habits. And again, the habit is I need to act more superior in relationship. And it's because this person doesn't get close if they feel inadequate displaced like i said so uh we can see what the problem is now like i said we saw why you attracted this person i promised myself this wasn't going to be super long tonight but i said god please make it a little shorter because sometimes i don't know what you guys like long long or short or but there's a lot of knowledge in our relationships and understanding why things play out, I always believe is important. So, but I also know how important it is when we want to know what this person really truly feels. So even though they did all this doesn't mean that they don't have feelings and it doesn't mean that they wouldn't do anything. However, like, again, this person, um, again, like, I feel like, they tend to be, again, a lone wolf. It says it again. It's a lone wolf style. And the reason why is because all their relationships never really work out. So they rather take on the persona that they're, you know, a rebel without a cause, a lone wolf, that they don't need anybody in their life. And that's the mask. That's the mask. Because it's like it's hiding the fact that you feel inadequate. Which is why you need to make me feel, again, you make me feel inadequate when really that's you. And that's why you have to elevate. And so now, even though you didn't treat me right, and you know that you didn't treat me right, you hold back because of your pride. And again, like where they make the, they made the situation into a bigger mess, into a bigger mess, right? Be, like it's a big hassle now. And it's because like that, and that's really what the wound is. What it's, it's not really what happened. It's, it's how they continuously handle the situation where now it's overly complicated because it's like, well, now I have to like figure out like how I can come back. And that's the sabotaging behavior where really you didn't really need to elevate yourself to begin with. Where there's a sense of, again, where they felt they can they can feel like you're very uh, compassionate. They feel like you're their other half because and and almost like played on the fact that you know you're you're kind that you're that you're loving that you that you're unselfish that that you displayed those things. So now the person's embarrassed, and that's why I'm saying it's like it went from bad 
to worse because after this person did what they did, well, then now it's like, now they're going to focus on the type of person that you are. Now they're going to look and see how they treated you. And so, like I said, their, their ego is still running the show because this person wants to actually be seen as someone that has those traits that you display and not uncommon for most to want to go to the light let's just face it so the fact that you again like again are ethical someone that you are compassion that you're unselfish people see that about you that you have light this person so desperately wants to be seen that way and they are not seen that way and it's because the behaviorisms that come from their shadows are obviously not of light. They're again of that mask. It's of that persona. So I believe that that's also another part of why this person has created a big thing in their head because they would have to actually come back, apologize to someone that they see as better and they know is better. That's really what it is. It's the fact that, again, your character. So it's, again, so that's what they worry and they fear, the rejection. They fear, again, and there's a part of them that's like, would want you to soothe them. And that's not really your way because, again, that would be undervaluing yourself. And and so th it's this relationship is making this person look at some very uncomfortable emotions like feel them look at some some why they've acted the way that they have and they're really uncomfortable about it they have anxiety about it when they think about it and again and it it escalates because they don't really fix it either And it's again, it's almost like this person in the beginning was not, it, it like showed that they they acted not flexible. And it's because they had many, like many different options, had a lot of people, but none of those options were good options. And they had many options and there was a sense of, you know, I'm going to like see what I want to like explore like I want to see what I want I'm not going to let anyone convince me I'm not going to let any connection convince me I'm going to again I, I want to um I want to like ex experience but what I feel like this person had a lot of different options and they compared you to a lot of those options and nothing compared and that's really why this person is worried now and why that there's a part of them that, again, is looking and see, realizes that they're the ones that did all of it. They kept you down and they, I don't like, they don't want to be a lone wolf. Come on. Because, again, many options, because I want to act more superior, because that will make me feel safe and I won't get hurt. And what I'm seeing is it's like this person is now hurt. Again, where they they're still regardless. It's like you feel like there that problem is is that you feel like like home, like again, because there's a soul's connection. So again, there is a sense of that like it could go the distance, like that you're again that you feel like home, but I but like I said, um this person is completely conflicted and they're not conflicted because of how they feel they're conflicted of how am i going to return because again that mask would have to come down and so that's they're used to strategizing they're used to scheming if they would just get out of the logical analytical survival brain and move into the heart which is really what spirit's trying to do again um we wouldn't volunteer to just move into the heart. That's usually what we try to protect. But if you feel like home, you feel like home and the truth of the matter is, it's like, and they also see, like I said, no one compares. No one 
compares. Like, believe me, they've looked. It's again, the mother load to me is like, again, like they see like good things happening in your life. They see like, you know, that you're able to, because you vibe at a high vibration, you're able to manifest for yourself. And so this person just feels like if I was with you now that I can like that it would be good. It would be extremely good on all accounts, meaning like I would have everything because I can see that you can manifest. I can see that um, that you live a happy life. I feel like we're connected, but the problem is, is that everything that's already transpired. So it's almost like this person had to damage the connection because in order for them to like realize that like there is love there, you know, that it's like there's actually really is like a friendship and the enchantment is that there's this spiritual connection where it's almost like this person again had to like go through this whole like process, lose you. And then back themselves into a corner because that's pretty much what they did when wanting to act prideful instead of like just like surrender your ego and be and open up your heart. That's no this person again too many wounds, but then back themselves into a corner because it's like well I still have feelings even though I did all that I purposely did all that I purposely made you feel like you weren't important, forgot about you, purposely were like was always scheming and trying to control and wanting to be superior. I purposely did that. That's why it hurts. And that's why there really is a spiritual connection because again, and that's why they're seeing you for who you really are. I feel like the spirit hid who you really were from this person at first like because I feel like this is saying it's almost like they see you as making things happen within your life you're able to again manifest and so it's maybe manifest a happy life manifest a good job manifest whatever so again you are like the jackpot like you like this person has a lot of options but none of those options compare and that's why they're worried because it's like if they had to like experience it and um, and they know that they were completely stubborn and they know that they were not letting you in and that they were again just doing what it takes to, uh, you know, keep those walls up. And so again, remember this person built up a lot of walls. They got to figure out how to take those walls down and they have to figure out why they created those walls. So they're really conflicted because it's like, I didn't want, I didn't ask for this. Like it's almost like I didn't ask for this and thought that, you know, the games normally play with other people, you know, acting superior, not going to act more superior now. You know, this person, you know, if they're, what, they're actually looking at the situation and saying, I got the shit under the stick. I did all, I, I did all this. Yeah, I feel like this person is not going to be able to like hold back. They're going to like want to fix it. Like, and expect changes during the summer is what I feel like. It's like in the next, like, what are we in now? I'm like, what are we in? We're in, and we're in uh, June. So June, Ju June, July, August. So in August, this person's going to come back. And then I feel like maybe in six months, by six months, if they, you know, get their act together, they would hope to be able to like, be with you that this is like what it looks like to me mm 
yeah like there's again where this person is like the truth it's like it's that they're gonna again come to you during the summer and they're gonna again so be to speak the truth and their truth really is that they do have feelings that they really do care but you know, I believe that they have, they're they going to be really uncomfortable. I don't really think that they know that they're even going to do this, to be honest with you. Because, like I said, or that they know that they can't get over you is what this looks like. It looks like this person, there was always a connection. However, the wanting to control wanting to treat you bad, of assuming that you were going to be that insecure person, like how so many other times they've dated people that, you know, were not on a high vibration, gave them, they got what they wanted. And so again, now, unfortunately, you know, for this person, they're, they're not just seeing that you're not going to do that but also that nothing compares. It's like they did all this, tried to spiritually hurt you. And really now that of course they're worried because they look stupid. It was like, and there's no real explanation. There's no real explanation for why they did what they did. They just did it. No, I said I would be do it fast, but I'm called to call for one more. I can't fully be there. You know, like this person feels like I can't fully be there for you as long as I have I have I have these experiences that I need to heal. So like this person is starting to realize that this relationship is like making them heal that's what i feel like it's like that they could that they played so many games they ruined the relationship and um now that the relationship there again gets so worried that they're gonna finally say something to you but we can actually see why the, this relationship is a spiritual one, why they, again, can't really walk away, why you can't walk away from it. Because like I said, if you didn't feel loved, then, and this person treated you like that, well, no one should be able to make you feel that way. And so that means that, if they made you feel this way, you obviously needed to like heal those certain aspects within yourself. I feel like once you walked away, you did heal those aspects of yourself. And that's why this person, like I said, it's pushing them to heal. That's really what this is. It's like, it's really pushing them to heal. You know, it's pushing them to change. It's pushing them to um, to to become vulnerable. People don't go back to their wounds. They don't volunteer to do that unless there is love, unless they they feel emotionally that they're going to get something or that they're going to get something. This person again, there is that spiritual connection but they played so many games and all because of pride and the, what I see here is they built such a wall of pride that they cut themselves off and then once they were all safe they realized that they you know had feelings they realized of that you were more than just like the surface I feel like those lower vibe people that the, the person has connected to you know they were they're good looking they're nice but there was no substance what this person saw sees actually is there's a lot more than just the good looks there's the you know there's the mother load right the mother load is like is you're you're successful in all areas of your life where all these other people that are lower hanging fruit look at your person as successful 
and looking to leech on to that and really don't have anything else except for their looks to bring to the table and the person gets bored. And so what this is, is, is that you're in your life. You detach because you are in your life. And I think that that's why this person, what this person sees, it's like, I played around with you. I really thought we had a connection. I thought you were going to like do that. Like, again, give me what I wanted, um, which is just give in to me. And you didn't, you detached and your life got better. Your life got better. Like all of a sudden you are like, again, the real deal. You are like, your life is good. Everything you really are that, that person, but they didn't see it until they've completely destroyed the relationship, which was purpose. Like I said, I feel like God hid who you were from this person parts of you how they perceived you because of their wound that they had to actually build the wall so high so that that it would finally come down like it's not going to have a choice but to come down if this person even wants to have you as a friend because that's what was here too it was like this person said that you feel like home that's a soul's connection, number one, okay? This person loves who you are. Like you said, it's again, it's your contribution to humanity. When meanwhile, it's like always knew that, that they had feelings. Always knew that they had feelings for you. They made a big mess because of their pride. And so what I see too is that spirit purposely, like, when we have a soulmate, doesn't mean that that soulmate doesn't have wounds and that you're not going to activate those wounds and vice versa. I mean, any type of soulmate comes into our life to change our life. So again, I believe that this really is a soulmate connection. However, your person feels of inadequacy and feeling like needing to be like is more superior and that they don't really need anyone. They can be a lone wolf and wear again, wear their mask in order to keep you down. Right. When at the end of the day, that wall was so high that it had to come down they it's like regardless and it, like but this person wasn't expecting it now they're worried now yes they're worried because they see all their scheming and and mainly it makes them look at themselves i feel inadequate i don't feel like i belong so because i feel like i don't really belong i'm gonna make you feel like you're not important but now it's like this person again sees again all their options. Don't compare. Don't compare that there's again love, real love there. And they're gonna they're gonna tell you. They're gonna tell it. And they're they're not gonna hide it. You know, and then understand this fortress of theirs that they've created is going to come down. And it's going to come down within three to six months. It's slowly coming down, but the ego is big. And they're always going to surrender. But understand love always wins. Regardless of whether or not this person is ready or not whether or not people are in this person's life or not, whether or not, again, whatever it is, it's like this person is being forced to heal. And it's not uncommon when a person needs to be superior that they would have a bunch of people lingering in their life. It's not, again, anything that's going to feed the ego to make the ego, again, have that wall up. Where the ego is going to say, oh, look how, like, how many options you have. Look how many people. You don't need to be in 
that type of connection. You're going to give up too much control. Remember how what how this happened. Remember how your parents were. Remember who this the ego. We're really again love. We don't have control, and that's the moral to the story, regardless of what this person wanted to or not. It's not a fast uh, unfoldment process when the person has a huge ego either. It's a slow process. They move like turtles slow because they are going to overthink. They're going to talk themselves out of it. They're going to breadcrumb. It's again, I'm afraid to show my feelings. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. So it's a very slow, painful process, which has gave you apparently enough time to really create your life to a point that this person is saying that you're like the jackpot. Your life is going to be on easy street. Your life, you're not just the good looking, you're the entire package. You're like, again, where spirits like is making this person look and then you were always there they didn't want to take the time so this person's kicking themselves that's why they have anxiety I, I, I didn't see that it's like like I here I was hanging out with all these stupid people and like I mean Molly you're the one so we always ask spirit what is the energy here what's what's what what is the takeaway? And really, Spirit says, inner work, that God brings you ideal situations for your healing. As you become aware of your weaknesses, I turn them into strengths. God turns them into strengths. I direct my thoughts towards the light and see the positive side of every stage of my life. Darkness turns into courage. Thus, I get stronger. So again, this person, whether or not they, I don't think they're a twin flame, but they're definitely a soulmate. And they've come into your life to help you do the inner work and, and you help them come in to do the inner work. And the inner work is all about evolving back to unconditional love for however long it lasts. Remember, some soulmates come in for a day, some for a season, some for a lifetime. I have a feeling this one's only for a season. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.